up in my PJ sitting on the couch. Me too, and I love you. Love you too. I'm glad that you came home. You needed to. I was having a very bad, I've actually had a very bad week. Well, so, right. Uh, Matt's been making our, all of our lives a living hell, but it's not just that. It's just, for for you, it is just that. But, like, for me, it's, like, a number of things. But yeah, definitely that. Um, but I was just telling people how we're, we both are, like, giving each other strength that we need to get through it. And, like, that Matt, like, that Mark can't even be at your home right now because he feels so unsafe. Right? With good reason. With good reason. There's been a lot of things said and a lot of, you know, threats. and Right. And it's scary and it's giving me anxiety too because then, you know, I don't know. I'm just been a hot mess. Right. So, so Matt knows that it gives you anxiety to make because Matt is emailing Misty because Misty has Matt's number blocked. So, Matt will email her certain things like Mark and Christina are getting back together when really Matt is making Mark's life feel unstable. And Misty knows that to be true. I know that to be true. My children know that to be true. And Misty's son knows that to be true. M Matt is making Mark feel like he cannot even sleep at night because his life is at risk. So Mark does not feel safe sleeping in Misty's house. And that's not Misty's fault at all whatsoever. Matt is making Misty feel like it is her fault. Um, she's feeling... Uh, you know, a lot of insecurities in her and Mark's relationship because Matt is building upon that because, and let's like, you know, like, and, and I'm well, honestly. He, like, so I have his number blocked, so he can't text or call me. So he's been emailing me and like, he'll say things like, you know, uh, Mark's going to leave you for Christina. He's leaving as soon as she comes back from Florida, he's leaving you, um, you know. He was fixing your security cameras yesterday, and he's like... Come here, Maddie. And he was like, uh, he emailed me, you know, he's probably laying in his old bed right now crying for you and crying for right. you. Right. And uh, he'll be gone as soon as he comes back and, you know, just playing on all my insecurities because I already feel very insecure already because um, I just feel like a lot of the times, like, I feel like I'm not good enough. Like, I feel like... Um, I feel like and Matt like, wants you to feel that way. He did that to you because of all of his abuse that he did to you. And Madison, my daughter, Misty, who you love, is here yeah, right yeah. now. And she will tell you that Matt plays on those insecurities. He would brag about it to us. My insecurities, just like how he plays on different insecurities of yours. So my insecurities <laughs> that Matt plays on. So not only is Matt playing on Misty's insecurities of thinking that me and Mark will get back together, Matt plays on my insecurities of knowing that I know that he would kill Mark. And despite, like, the fact that Mark and I are not together, we'll never be together, I don't want him to die. And despite, like, the fact that Mark and I are not together, we'll never be together, I don't want him to die. You know what I mean? And Matt knows that about me. And what Matt knows about her is that she'll get insecure that Mark and I are going to be back together. So Matt threatens me with Mark's life all the fucking time and a bunch of bullshit. And then he'll go back to Misty and be like, oh, and Madison has experienced the whole thing. Maddie, put your input. She doesn't want to talk about What do you want? About plugging to charge these. Oh, well, I can't unplug that plug. I'm sorry. Yeah, and so he just he just freaking knows what gets to me. He knows that I feel insane. Right. And that's what makes me feel. And then, like, you know... um, and he does it when you're at work. When he knows that, like, it's so hard for Misty. So Misty works 12 hours a day for seven days straight, which is a lot of hours. So he knows that when Misty's on her seven-day span, she's, you know. She's, I'm exhausted for some Right. Time. And so when I'm exhausted, I'm already anxious. because Exactly. I and he uses that to his benefit. I know. And all, all the stuff that ever goes down is the week I'm working because it's like it never happens as much on the week that I'm off. It always has to be the week that I'm working. It's always the week that you're working because he knows how to play on people's weekly weaknesses, just like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just wish I, you know, I, I just wish Matt could just move on and be happy. And I don't know why he has to send me emails, you know, 
and tell me these things. So, you know, because he knows they get to you. That's why. And he knows it gets to me when he does certain things. And we're going to stop letting that happen, Misty, me and you. And, I and I'm already know. so proud of you. So proud of you. And I just don't like, know look how at he you right now. You're not even crying. That there's even a chance for him to get back. Like, I don't know what the end game is. Like, you're trying to get back. Or are you just trying to torture? Like, I don't I don't know what torture. the end game is. Because there's no oh. way after everything that has happened and everything that has been said, mm -hmm. I would be a damn fool. You would never take it back. Wait. And if it's yeah. my dying wish, I'll make sure of it. And can I just tell you something, Misty? Mm -hmm. This is the first time I've seen you ever talk about this and not cry. And I am yeah. so incredibly proud of you. And I see the growth. And you're a bad bitch. Look I did a lot of crying there. already today, so I probably have just no more tears left. No, no, girl. It's because you're a bad bitch. And that man is not going to affect you anymore. Okay? I've cried the tears today for you, and you know I'm not usually the crier. We were both crying listen. together on the phone today. We do. We cry crying. together on the phone the last few days yeah. a lot. Like, and I can't wait to see you on Thursday. And I will not allow Matt to break you and Mark up, period. And, and, and you know, and know part, of, the part of it is my fault because I'm so insecure. And no, I know it's it not your fault. Insecure. Stop it. I know I do cause Take it own. back. Take it back. Take it back. <laughs> take it back. It's true because I get stuck no. in my No, Misty, take I it back. Mark thoughts. wants to hear you take that back. Take that statement back. <laughs> Mark needs to hear you take that statement back. I know, but I do, but I'll no. say that. But. No, there's no but. I would never say that's my fault with what Matt has done to you. No, it I is mean, not your fault. Oh, no, 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 I like break no, down the no, small thing. No, like, so emotional no, into a no, over nothing. No, 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 yeah. it's not your fault. And I'll keep saying no as long as you talk and try to act like it was your fault. It was not. Yeah. Period. I understand it's not my fault, but the way I react. No, there's no buts. Problem. No, 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 no. There's yeah. no buts, Misty. It's not your fault. Yeah, but and I should I love be you. reacting to things the way I react to things. I tend to break down. At the right, but it's not your fault. Break down. It's, it's not hard. your fault. It's yeah. okay to break down. I break down too. I break down in a different way. Yeah. Look at me, how I break down. Mentally unstable. It's yeah. not your fault. And it's not my fault. It's not your fault what he did to you. Yeah, it's not your fault that he tries to break up you and Mark on a daily. Strong. You need to get some it's strong. not your fault, Misty, that Mark like feels like his life is in danger because of Matt. That is not your fault. Because Mark honestly feels like his life is in danger. Because yeah, and I feel like it is my fault. I feel like it it's is. It's not at all your I fault. Know because, you it's know, more I my fault than it is yours. And it's not my fault. But it's more my fault than it is yours, and it's not my fault. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not your fault. I feel like it is, and there's nothing anybody it's can not. stop me from feeling no, that way. No, it's not, Misty. Yeah. You're going to be strong. I'm the one with the crazy ex, you know, threatening to Who kill Who cares? Everybody. I'm crazy, bitch. I don't care about your crazy ex. Yeah. That's not your fault. Where's your wine? We need a cheers. Here. I just started. I only have one sip out of it. I wish you were here, and I can't wait to see you on Thursday, but yeah. none of this is your fault, and I want to hear you take all of those words back. Okay. I'll take it back. All my people are saying, stop interrupting her, and I'm not going to stop interrupting her until she stops saying that it's her fault. Period with a T. I'm just telling you the way I feel. I know, I and I know. They're valid. And I know the that. I they are very valid, but... Yeah. It's not I don't know if I'll ever stop bleeding. You fucking will. I've, don't you say that. Yeah. You know about me and my speaking things into the universe and my manifesting. You will. Don't I you ever just, say I'm again. A bad week. I think I'm just in a bad week. And I'm, I'm having a bad, bad week too, girl. I'm having a bad week too. Like, I, I swear to God, if Matt would have called me tonight and said, Christina, I love you and I'm sorry, come back. I would have said... Okay, and got in the car and drive back. And you know how fucked up that is? Because my kids said if I ever took him back, they would never forgive me. And I would have probably done that. So 
I'm weak too. My my daughter just said. No, I understand. Quick. I understand. I went through 16 years of one. Exactly, to and we all have bad weeks. We and all I have do bad it weeks for that long. So I mean, right? And, and Matt has been tormenting you and harassing you this week. Yeah. I'm very much both of us, and I think maybe worse to you even. I no, well, worse. no, 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 no. It's actually worse to you. It's worse to you. Way yeah. worse to you. Way worse to you because he's making you feel like Mark doesn't want you, and that's couldn't be farther from the truth. Yeah, and he knows that's my insecurities, and I need to. I realize that he knows this is my insecurities, and I know I'm being irrational in my thought process, but I still cannot stop irrational thoughts from invading right. me. I know. I'm working on it. I'm working on Good. it. Good, and you are working on it, and the fact that um, you're not even crying right now shows me so much growth. Yeah. That's how much I know you're working on it. And I'm so proud of you. Like, so fucking proud of you. Yeah, I'm getting so, there. So, you look like the most beautiful, baddest-ass bitch I've ever seen, like a Viking. Oh, like I do not look like a Viking. You do look like a Viking right now because... I just threw my scrubs off and I got PJs on. And I'm you look a like a Viking. I look like a tired hospital worker. <laughs> I look like a, a drunk... Bitch who's been crying on TikTok all night and the cops showed up at my house because I'm crazy. And that's I cried okay. I for an hour at work tonight. Like I, I know you did because I talked to you. We cried I together. I had to change locations like 10 times to make it seem like I was just kind of wandering around. But really, I was like sobbing my eyes out because I couldn't control my anxiety. Right. But I've been sobbing all night, too. And it's okay. It's Okay. It is. And Matt will not have control over you. And Mark absolutely loves you. I know. I, I absolutely love him, too. It's I know. Just, it's just hard. Right now. Well, right now, Mark is not with Misty because Mark doesn't feel safe. And I wasn't like supposed to be at home tonight. I'm not supposed to be here. She right wasn't. And, I'm and, supposed to be at work, but I was feeling ill. And I'm sure that Mark would tell you where he's at. You know what I mean? And you could go there. I know that. Oh, I know but, where he's at. I know where he's at. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. I'm glad that you do. I'm glad yeah. that you do. He told me I could come there, but I really want him to get a good night's sleep and be rested and right. have some space and uh, do his Well, thing. he doesn't need space from you. He needs just space I from... I just want him to have a, a calm, quiet night. I don't want to go in there with my anxiety and upset him more because, you know, yeah. I, need, I understand. have the nice, quiet night. So I do I'm understand. exactly where he's at, though, and he did tell me that I was more than welcome to come there, but I did not. Good. Good. So. Good. Yeah. And I'm glad that you understand because literally Mark, he, he, he is very fearful right now. And that is the facts. Yeah. And it's not that he's fearful in a way that like he's a scared little bitch. Matt has literally threatened to kill Mark many times in front of my children, in front of Misty, in front of everybody. Matt has told me the plan on how exactly to shoot Mark while he sleeps in their bed. Like, so like, I'm not going to let Mark get shot, you know? So I told him the things and then Matt's like, you went behind my back and you did this and that and the other. And I'm like, dude, I'm supposed to just let Mark get shot in his sleep. Like. Right. And he was going to be here home alone all night. I was not supposed to be here till the morning. Right. So, yeah. That's why he didn't feel safe being here. Yeah. We have reported this to the cops, guys, and Misty does have a process server trying to serve Matt with a PPO right now, but, like, there's really nothing that can be done. Um, and it's sad. It's just, just going to take time to get it done. Yep. And look at you sitting over there looking like a badass bitch who I haven't even seen one tear come out your eye, and I just can't be more proud. I'm like yeah. a mama bear, just so proud right now. Yeah, it's like I said, I cried them all earlier. So there's nothing left up in this tank. They're empty. So I love it. I'm getting there, though. You Just are, me. Misty, and I'm very proud of you. Yeah, I'm proud of you, so too. proud of you. And I know I'm, you had a right too, and you wanted to contact. I get it. I totally get it. Like, I swear to God, if Matt would have said to me today, Christina, I love you, and I just... And I, I would have cut you off. You would have cut me off. So my daughter just said I would have cut you off. But like, but I don't think it matters when you're like that and you're in that. Table. No, when you're at that weak point. You. Right. And I just, I just wanted Matt, like, I just wanted him to like acknowledge me for two seconds and like, 
He didn't. He 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 told me. You know what he told me, Misty? What did you say? And I have the email, and I'll share it with you. I'm not gonna share it with the world, but like, remember when I was driving up north and I was like talking about yeah. like last week weekend or right? Yeah. When you guys made me turn around yeah. and I talked about something that I literally like. Not that I wanted to do or had a plan to do, but like something that I was contemplating. He said, he emailed me today and he was like, you should have done that thing that you said that you wanted to do last Saturday when you were driving through Flint. And I was like, like that's fucked up, dude. And poor Missy. Nobody should, ever say, nobody should ever say those things to any other human being. No, but he uses suicide as um as a weapon. Yeah. And it's okay. You just have to uh, take it for not literal value. Oh, yeah. We should battle. That way, at least we could be getting money right now. So we're going to battle. Because Missy left work. And this is my job. So, guys, give us gifts. You know. I had to take a half of a mental health shift. That is a good thing. That is a good thing. I've always been jealous of that. Yeah, I'm still getting paid, so don't feel bad. I didn't lose all my money from coming home early. I still have PTO, so right. I just uh, needed to take half the night and kind of just check out because I was struggle busting bad. And I can't <laughs> wait to see you um, in a couple of yeah. days. I cannot wait to see you. Yep, and I got an appointment with a psychiatrist on Monday, or not Monday, but when, I'm, when we come back from Florida. Good. I so... We that got makes me really I'm become a normal person again, hopefully. Well, hopefully you don't become a normal person because I really can't stand <laughs> normal people. Well, but I hope I will be able to work an entire shift at work without freaking out and crying well, in the bathroom. you will. Matt <laughs> is running your life through the fucking ring right now, like putting you through a living hell. You know, that's what yeah. he's doing. And he knows exactly what he's doing and... The fact that you're not crying right now, I just can't yeah. tell you how proud of you I am. Yeah. I you're just more beautiful than I've ever seen you in my life, ever. And I've seen you at the most beautiful. Right now, I've never seen this Misty, and it, it couldn't be more attractive. Like, not to me, but I'm just saying in general. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to hit on you. you oh, no, know. I know. I get, I get what you're But, saying. like, literally, you look like a bad bitch, and I fucking love it. Yeah. It'll be good. It's yeah. gonna be, everything's going to be good. I just need something to take the edge off because I just right. don't want it to get worse because I've had it so bad before where I could barely drive a car. It's not going to get worse. And nope. I'm, it's getting bad because I'm having trouble even working right now. So I know it's getting yeah. very bad because I is. hardly make it through an entire shift. And this has been my problem every day that I've worked this week. And Miss so I know it's the truth. Getting, very bad right now. When you're so not stop working. Stop it before it gets so bad I can't drive again. Right. But when you're not working, so let's hear this. So Misty works seven days on and seven days off. Her seven days that she's working, she, he knows it's stressful because she works 12-hour shifts seven days a week. Her seven days that she's off, and I witness this myself, he won't even contact her. Yeah, my not, seven days off, I do a lot better. Like Because he I, doesn't contact yeah. you because he knows you're not stressed. And I'm like, then when she's working and she's stressed the fuck out for seven days straight because she works... 12 hour shifts for seven days straight. He's constantly, have you noticed that pattern, Misty? Like, yeah, I know. I gotta get a charger before my phone dies. Hold on. Okay. You talk because everybody keeps telling oh, me, I don't shut know up, I Christina. Talk Let her talk. talk. I don't know if I can talk about it. Okay, I'll try. I'll try. Yes, the fuck you. Right. I'll try. Yeah. So, yeah, you I mean, I'm a great psychiatrist. So, Gonna get some meds before I get out of control because I feel like it's getting pretty out of control right now and I just see it spiraling deeper and deeper. Yeah, and uh, usually I'm able to pull myself out of it like when I can feel like it's getting pretty bad. But this time I'm be I'm like beyond that threshold of me helping myself. I think I know. I've gone a little bit too far this time. And uh, I think I need to get some help this time. So before it gets real oh. bad, and I have trouble, like, you know, driving the car and I'm already having trouble working, which is not good. Thankfully, I work for a very understanding employer. And uh, I do have a lot of, like, you know, paid time off and, like, you know, vacation time that I can use when I'm really struggle busing.
I mean, I made it through the other days this week, but it was torturous, like painfully torturous. And today was probably the worst day that I had this week. So I'm, you know what? I'm just going to cap it out right now, go home and try to relax and try again tomorrow. So that's so. The- <laughs> try again tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's a new day. Right. And you're doing so. so good today. And thank God that we both had each other like today. Like, honestly. Yeah. He is controlling all of our lives. But I want you guys to know that, like, the growth that Misty has right now, the amount of control that, like, she's letting go of him have is, like, monumental. And so even though it seems like he's controlling us, like, he might be. But the fact that she's sitting here speaking about it right now She's releasing that control that he has know, on her. People who are, have not been in this type of relationship will have a hard time understanding it because it's not right. rational. It doesn't make sense no. to a rational, like, thinking person thinking about a relationship. But when you're in that type of relationship, <laughs> it makes total sense in your own head because right. you're not thinking rationally. You're thinking, you know, with your heart. You're thinking because your body's giving you all that extra like serotonin highs and then, then the lows and you get addicted yep. to the cycle of um, the highs and the lows. Exactly. And, so, and, and that's what I'm in right now. You know what I mean? At least the one this thing week. that was really hard for me um, after I left Matt was just the calm for the minute, like the first oh like month, for the month. And I was just like, You're like I, what is this? I sat here and I literally didn't know what to do i did like i'm like i am the boringest person in the world and i'm like i would ask mark like what do you want to do and he'd be like i don't know what do you want to do like we had no idea what the hell to do like we were just right. like lost so not used to that right right and i was like so worried i'm too boring i have like nothing going on and you know what right. i mean and you just i just had the overwhelming fear of boredom like it was the weirdest feeling ever like just the calm was just as horrible because like the low you know what I mean right because being out of the fight or flight mode because you yeah, hadn't been out of terrible. that terrible and I just felt like I was like I don't know I just felt like it was really hard for me to adjust and I'm still adjusting because there's still days all right go like you know what the hell because you were made to feel like everything was your fault for such a long time yeah everything was always Missy's fault in their whole relationship well even just and the constant chaos there was just constant. Like something there was just always something going on. And when you remove that chaos, you're just sitting here on the couch, like staring at the wall. Like, right. What the hell? Like, what do I do now? Like, right. You don't even and know. I'm what sure Mark do. felt that too with me because, you know, the, like the chaos with you and Matt was on a different level than it was with me and Mark. Like, I know that I brought chaos to mine and Mark's relationship, but it was nothing. And you can attest to this because I'm sure that Mark has explained to you. It was nothing like the shit you've been through with Matt. You know what I mean? Yeah. There was chaos with me and Mark, but like the shit you went through was like abusive, like constant, constant like chaos. Yeah. Basically. And then when that chaos is gone, it's just like you don't even know what the hell to do. You're like, you like, know, right? Like, you're like you, you're like, you question everything. You're like, what am I doing with my life? I'm sitting here staring at the wall. What do I do? Do I go to the store? Do I go to the car wash? Like, what do I do? I'm like, right. you just don't know what the hell to do. You just like, right. I, don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Maybe someone no. else knows exactly. They knows. all know. Yep. And that's why you're getting people liking and gifting right now because they know yeah. exactly how you feel. Yeah. Um, but I'm learning like what to do. So like, okay, now I go, okay, I can go to the grocery store. I can go to the right. gym. Good you know, for you. You know, know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm getting there. I'm figuring out, like, things to do, you know? Because it's like you have to rediscover, like, what you want to do in life. It's like you have to rediscover, like, how you want to live. Like, because you don't know how to live. And that's why I'm so glad that at least you do have Mark. And that's why I will do whatever I can to make sure that Matt doesn't break that up. Because Mark will be a person in your life that lets you know that, like, you can do anything you want to do. You're like, you question everything. You're like what am I doing with my life? I'm sitting here staring at the wall. What do I do? Do I go to the store? Do I go to the car wash? Like, what do I do? I'm like, right. you just don't know how to do. You just like, right. I, don't, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Maybe someone no. else knows exactly. They knows. all know. Yep. And that's why you're getting people liking and gifting right now because they know yeah. exactly how you feel. Yeah. Um, but I'm learning like what to do. So like, okay, now I go, okay, I can go to the grocery store. I can go to the right. gym. 
Good you know, for you. You know, know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm getting there. I'm figuring out like things to do, you know, because it's like yeah. you have to rediscover like what you want to do in life. It's like you have to rediscover like how you want to live, like because you don't know how right. to live. And that's why I'm so glad that at least you do have Mark. And that's why I will do whatever I can to make sure that Matt doesn't break that up because Mark will be a person in your life that lets you know that like you can do anything you want to do and it's yeah. okay. And you're yeah. not stupid and you're not dumb and you're not all those things that Matt made you feel for all those years. So and at the least problem you is a... you don't even know what the hell you want to do for somebody to even let you do it. You have no idea what the right. hell you for you, yes, exactly. Yeah, and I'm still trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? It's just, I mean, I'm so proud of you. But, yeah, and I'm you're so lucky to get that out so early, because uh, you oh, want yeah. years of this shit. Is, years of it is worse than you know, because it's easier to get out and change back to who you were. The sooner it is. it is, and like I told my mom, like I said, because like I never, I'm 40 years old, and I, I, my dad is just like Matt, right? I would mm -hmm. never allow myself to be with somebody like that. You already know this. Like I'm yeah. preaching choir right now. So I told my mom the other day and it really hit her. Like when I said, when I started feeling like my mom and Misty, when I started feeling like I was losing my voice the way that my mom did and went the way that Misty did, I was like, there's a fucking problem here. Cause that's not me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I always said I, I would never, I remember going to your house one day, this was early on, and uh, you were in the kitchen, and you were so on edge, and you were like, you were just like me, and yes. I remember I gave you a hug at the kitchen sink that day, and uh, me and Mark left the house, and I remember crying half the way home for you, because I was so upset, because I saw you in me, or I saw right. me in you. I remember that day. Uh, I think I told you about it, yeah, and yeah. you were and uh, yeah, you were wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt. And I think you had a hat on and you're standing at the kitchen sink. And uh, Matt was giving you, he, I think he was outside in the garage and he was just giving you a hard fucking time. And you were just, mm -hmm. you were frantic. Right. I remember. And I remember seeing myself in you and it was disturbing because I never thought in a million years that because you are such a strong badass. And I looked up to you because you were just like the strong woman. Hear me roar. And uh, I saw you in a weak moment, and it scared you. You saw me losing my me. voice. To yeah, him. I did, and, and it scared you, the hell out of me. Yeah, I was scared for you, and I and I, I know that you saw that. And many Mark times. was so upset for you, and oh, uh, and I know, and you guys were very vocal about it to me, and I yeah. appreciate that, you know, and I appreciate the fact that. I like I wouldn't listen to you guys and I would be like fuck it like I'm still gonna just be here with this motherfucker and I would trash you guys on the internet and then as soon as he like really just got me to the end of my rope and I needed you guys I snapped my fingers and you guys were there and I literally appreciate that more than you will ever know despite what the haters think fuck all of them because you guys know the truth and that's all that matters and you know there was hurtful things and I never did. I did think that I was never going to be your friend again, to be honest with I you. Know. I know yeah. you did, but I knew the person you were before all of this happened. Right. And, you know, and I'm a, I, I have a forgiving heart. I will forgive anybody. You know, if she's right. truly, sincerely sorry. And I, I, believe I am she is sorry. And it, so I, you know, know that I forgive am. you and I choose to be your friend. Like we have a lot in common, you know, and, and I, I appreciate that. And, and I appreciate the fact that you were like, you knew who I was before this. You knew. I did. You I knew did. what was before going on. This happened. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's okay. And people can be mad at me and whatever. And that's right. Fine. And who cares? And if it Fuck happens them. again, you can tell me you told me so, but I don't think it'll happen again. So. It's not gonna. Like, I, yeah. I will. After tonight, like, I honestly had a weak moment where I thought tonight, like, I might take Matt back if he would just have me, you know what I mean? Which is just a weak moment for me. Cause you know, the last like 10 days I've been so strong with him. Cause I've talked to you yeah. every single day. You're going to have weak moments. You're going right. to. And today was a weak moment. And I thought, I know my kids won't want nothing to do with me, but if he just told me that he loved me, I would probably go back. And, and I, and I didn't, and I'm so glad that like, he didn't like respond to me the way that I needed him to, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
But I just... You know what helped me out, too? Because a lot of the times, like, I would forget all the bad things. Like, somehow, mine would just block out bad things. And I would only want to remember the beautiful, wonderful things. Because there are a lot of beautiful, wonderful qualities and attributes to Matt. He's a a very good human being. He has different sides. He's got the one side who is a human that you would love. You would go to the end of the world for he's just a good soul he would help anybody out you know and then there's this other side to him the one that you don't want to kill him. yourself you don't even want to be a part of the fucking earth because you would yes. rather die and uh, and i like found that. myself like blocking out all the bad parts and only trying to remember the good parts yes so i started to like write things down because you would be amazed at how many things slip your mind that were so horrible right. and you cry, but like you couldn't recall them and you could only recall the good things i should you do know? that i should do that yeah and so when you're oh, feeling really? weak, then you just go back to your notebook and read all the bad things again and be like this is why yes so and that's the truth too and Ma- so madison my daughter she keeps telling me like mom don't you remember the bad things because she you my don't kids- your brain tries you to block bad things out. It really does. It tries and to writing them down is genius. Yeah. yeah. Genius. Seriously. And make lists. Yeah. My yeah, mom, you know what my mom used to do? Um, when my dad would have bad behavior, which was often because he's very much like Matt, despite the fact that he's a great dad. And I will continue to say my dad is a great dad. Terrible husband. Um, my mom would record him on her phone yeah, and she'd send it to all their friends. And I was like, mom, that's so fucked up. But like, it was her way of holding herself accountable. Yeah. She'd record him doing his shit, which is the same shit that Matt does. And then she'd literally send it to all their friend group where who had already thought my dad was perfect. And I was like, mom, that is so fucked up. Why are you doing that to our family? Well, I don't agree quite with that. That seems a little extreme. It was extreme. But now that I look back, I'm like... If that was her only way of doing it because of X, Y, or Z or whatever, like at least she held herself accountable by doing that. You know what I mean? Like, cause had my mom not done that, I don't think she would have left my dad. Well, it's what works for her. You know, right. everybody has something different. So, you know, yeah. and it yeah. wasn't great. And I, I, I suffered a lot of trauma because of it, but like recording them, whether you send it to the friend group or not, just recording these people when they're in these phases, like, I think it's a good thing at times. Because yeah. you forget. Like, I don't even know. Like, right. I can't even remember big chunks of my life. Like, it just... Right. Like, are gone. Like, I don't even know. And, like, you, people will, like, you know, mention, like, this and that. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I do remember that. But that, like, totally had slipped my mind. Like, huge yeah. events. You know what I mean? Right. We it's, were talking about that the other day. Like, how Misty forgot of a lot of things I can't really remember my child when he was small at all I have hardly any memories of him during his toddler years or like you know when yeah. he was young those were probably some of the worst years because that's when and Matt, Matt will blame that on all- your postpartum and he'll try to blame it on something else too but it was basically because and I'm not going to say it here because that's your story to tell because of the trauma that you went through with that man. It had nothing to do with your postpartum. It had nothing to do with the fact that he made you think that it was your fault. It had fully to do with the trauma that he caused you. And yeah. that is why you disassociated and you completely forgot those, those chunks in time. And none of that was your fault. I know, I know. I I realized, like, I, it I was not postpartum. It was having an abusive no, I husband. Did, I did really. I had severe depression after I had my son, and that's why I never had another child. Well, you ever. had severe depression, Misty, because of what he. I know through, my life wasn't good. There which was, is what the world doesn't know about. Which is what something I will never talk about because it's your story. Yeah. But that was not be just postpartum. Like there was so much more to that. You know what I mean? I don't even know that you had postpartum. That was the I think he time. wanted you to think that you had postpartum, but honestly, I, as a hairdresser, I had a lot of clients that had postpartum. I honestly don't think, I think that, yeah, you did probably have some postpartum, but it was like induced by a narcissistic piece of shit who was controlling your fucking brain by abusing you. 
I think that had a lot more to do with it than you give yourself credit for. Yeah, it could. You know, I I was in a really bad a really bad space then. That was probably some of the worst years because that's when he was drinking heavily, and he even has apologized to me for those years, and I've chosen to accept his apology because he was sincere and he knew that it was a really bad time for me. And, uh, and that's why he never, but he with- made it a bad time for you, Misty. He uh, yeah. fucking yeah. made it a bad time for you. And, and uh, that's why he quit drinking and stuff too, because he realized how much torture and how seven years later, after you gave birth, he quit drinking. Like I- he stopped like discounting what the fuck that man did to you. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to like be bossy and everything else, but he fucked you up and you give him way too much grace. You give him way too much grace. You really fucking do. I'm well, I mean, just saying. Years and I've seen very, I've had many beautiful, wonderful memories. One, exactly. And I have two in the three months that I've been with him. Like he's given me some of the best times of my whole life, but he's yeah. also given me some of the worst. Exactly. And he gave you all I saw with him. He gave you 80% bad times and 20% really fucking good times. Like the best times. He's texting me right now. He's texting me right now because he's trying to stop what I'm saying because he knows it's fucking true. And he knows that I'm making you take that power back. And so Matt is texting me right now because he literally sees Misty sticking up for him for what the fuck he did to her. And it's sick that Matt is texting me right now saying bullshit. Misty... He did this to you. You have no fault in any of this. I know. I'm telling you, what he did to you was not okay. <laughs> not okay. I'm just trying to forgive so I can move on. I know that you are. And I love Matt, too. And Matt has a... Yeah. Ma- like, I, I literally, Matt, I know you're listening. Right now, tonight, I would have taken you back, even though my daughters told me if they ever took you back, they disowned me. That's how much I love you. But what you did to her... For 16 years is not okay. And that's what Matt doesn't like about me. That's why Matt and I will never work. Because I call him out as toxic fucking bullshit. Misty is taking her voice back, Matt. And she'll never take you back. And I will teach Misty, even if it takes me my whole fucking life, I will teach her that everything that she went through was not her fault. And I promise that. I know. I know it's not my fault. It's just... In, I know. I get these moments and where I, like, I know you cry do. and I think everything is my fault and you know and like I know. I don't know like and I've been talking because to he people. I've because been he to that's people. what he groomed you to believe. Yeah, and I know I've been talking to a lot of people in the same situation as me and they, they say, have will never go away. You might He just away. texted me he said as if I would ever take you back. And exactly. And he seasoned you for the emotional part and he seasoned me for the physical part. And so like literally Matt knows that even he has so much pull over me, even in three months, imagine what he did to her. Like, and I'm so proud of you, Misty. I'm getting there. And you know, and I am proud of myself too. I really am. I'm so proud of you. You have not cried one time on this live. I have not. I have not. Do you know that I... And I'm always on TikTok crying. I'm like the cry... I think you're the most baddest bitch right now. Like... I always cry every TikTok. Badass bitch right there. I'm crying right here. I told Misty, I said... I like literally yelled at her the other day. I was... When I was leaving, when she was there for me, her and Mark came and they did this, that, and the other for me. And they were like literally there for me in a way that they should not have been. Um, but they were because they're good people. And I said, I I like literally yelled at her. Don't you fucking let that man hear you cry ever again in your life. Yeah. And you know, it's hard. I wanted to be his friend. I really did. And I tried and I tried and I tried. And every time I would try to have a civil conversation, we cannot have a civil conversation. And you know, it's just threats after threats after threats. And like, I I would have loved to have kept him in my life in some form or way, but maybe, maybe too. But maybe this is a blessing. Maybe it is a blessing. My own mental health, my own sanity, that it has to be completely cut off. One hundred percent, and it's unfortunate because yeah. I feel exactly how you feel. Because like, I feel what... the good person that he can be. Amazing, yeah, amazing. Like my favorite person. Like he's the most. 
Like literally I've never had a favorite person minus my kids the way that I have with Matt. And that's sad to say, and I know people don't understand it, but like I literally, this man, he is amazing when he's amazing. But like when he's not, he makes you literally like want to like not live. My favorite statement about Matt is nobody's ever made me feel more loved in my life and nobody has ever hurt me as much in my life. 100% me too. Yep. 100% me too. And uh, I just want mediocre in the middle. I mean, Mark, I love him and he gives me a lot, like beautiful love too. Like he right. gives me great, beautiful times too. And he's good to me and like he doesn't yell at me. He's never. It's, and I appreciate him so much and I love him so much. And it's actually like a, a healthy love. Which right, is it's a healthy relationship. Because I've never experienced a healthy love relationship before. Right. So um, it's all new to me. It's just. Um, it's hard because you feel like you don't deserve it because Matt wants you to like, feel like you don't deserve I it. I feel like I'm this piece of trash that nobody wants that, like, you know, and you're I feel not. like I'm not good enough. I feel like, you know, I'm not skinny enough. I'm not pretty enough. I don't make enough money. I feel like, you know, I'm not interesting enough. I'm not outgoing. And I'm Sorry that, like, if I ever made you feel that way, because I know I purposely have made you feel that way. And I am so sorry, like, from the bottom of my heart. I hope that you, I hope that you know that if it wasn't for me being a selfish bitch, um, that I would not have done those things to you. And I'm, I'm very sorry. And we can move past that. I freaking We can. And I take full yeah. responsibility and I'm not blaming it on anything other than the fact that I was a selfish I was. Bitch. I've had these thoughts even before anything that you have had said. You know what I mean? These are things that have been, you know, in the back of my mind, probably for a lifetime, you know, my right. entire life. You know what I mean? So that made me like a perfect victim to be in this type of relationship. Right. In the first place. And, you know what I mean? Same with me. Even though mine only lasted six months, same with me. Matt knew that Matt knew exactly. He's really good at seeing what people's weaknesses is, are, especially in women. Yeah. Um, and I've never felt like such a big piece of shit ever in my life than I have the last six months. I've never felt like such a big waste of space, fat ass, ugly, even though he made me feel more beautiful than anybody has ever made me feel. Matt yeah. literally made me feel more beautiful than any man on the face of this planet has made me feel. But he at the same time made me feel like the most ugly, worthless piece of trash that didn't even deserve a space on the universe yeah at the same time and you dealt with it for 16 years i only did it for six months and so i remember the day in the hotel room at the one party i just stood in the wrong spot in the room yes i remember and that i was not allowed to stand in that space in that room because you yes. had to walk around me and it became right. and i just fell apart because like I wasn't even yeah. allowed to stand in certain places or breathe right. at a certain level of breathing. Like, yeah, I was constantly on eggshells constantly. Yeah. I didn't know, like, if I, I didn't know that that was such a big deal that like, if I stood in that one spot, he would have to walk. It became like a big 15 minute meltdown where oh, everybody yeah. was involved because he had to walk around me. Right. I he remember it. Said, it Excuse me, and I would have moved like, you know, a right to the right or to the left, but it was just, I was in the way and it was devastating to him that I could ever think to stand in that one spot yeah. in his path of walking. Yeah. And that is one of the one things that stood out in my mind just like recently, like towards the end there that was just like, this is so fucking ridiculous. It's like what so the hell am I doing? Yeah. Like, and, and I remembered those things while I was trying to have enough strength to leave him. Cause although he didn't do that stuff to me, he did other things that were equally as bad, but not that stuff. And when I was getting the strength to say, no, this is not okay. I had to remember all that shit he did to you that I only witnessed for six months, not the whole 16 years. And I was like, what am I doing? He treated his wife of 16 years in this way. Do you remember that day I drove to your house and he was supposed to come over later? Yes. I got there and then that shit he did to you that I only witnessed for six months, 
not the whole 16 years. And I was like, what am I doing? He treated his wife of 16 years in this way. Do you remember that day I drove to your house and he was supposed to come over later? Yes. I got there and then he, yes. he, go. he told me to go ahead of him because he had something yep. and to drive separately and yep. I got there. And as oh, soon as yeah. I walk through the door, he starts calling me like, what the hell am I doing there? Yep. And just playing oh, yeah. like portal games with me and... 100% I remember that. And he was playing games with me too because he was playing games with me at the same time, like saying he was coming, he wasn't. He wanted you to come, this, that, and the other. Then he told oh. me to go, and I came there, and then he's like, what the hell are you doing there? And then I was, like, sobbing. And Right, but then remember, so then he came later. So yeah, he came he later. And he, he was lying to me the whole time, saying, I'm not coming, I'm not coming, blah, blah, blah. And he was, like, lying to me. And I was like, oh, great. So now Matt's not coming, and he's making Misty feel like a piece of shit. So then he gets there. He just shows up after he tells both of us and Mark that he's not coming. Okay. So he shows up and he's like exhausted because all Mark, all Matt ever is, is exhausted because like nobody can understand how exhausted he is. And, and we just work him to death. Right. Well, I'm sorry. You're a grown adult. You have your own like a time management. So do you remember Misty? We're all watching a movie. Me, you, Mark, yeah. Matt fell asleep mm -hmm. and then yep. he moved to the other couch because he was sleeping and whatever X, Y, Z. So we're all sitting in here and you guys, you and Mark know that like, I don't watch TV well. I don't watch movies well. I just, I'm not a good person to watch anything besides like my phone with TikTok yeah. or whatever. So it was like an hour into the movie. I go in there and I wake up Matt and I'm just reminding myself of this just to hold myself accountable. And this might be fucked up, but I go in there to wake up Matt. Do you remember this? Like... Uh -huh. So I go in there was and he's snoring. Before, was that the night before Mark's surgery? It was the night before Mark's surgery. Yeah. Oh, and this is what kind of sent off this whole old. thing. So he That's was already, right. Matt was already being a dick. So I go in there to wake him up, right? Because like he had slept now for about an hour and a half and it was maybe 1030 at night. And I was like, I just want to say hi. Like we're in this polyamorous relationship, you know, whatever. So I go in there and I wake him up and I'm like, Matt. And he like, literally was like acting like he had PTSD from the military. Cause at this time we all believed that he was still in the military. And I was like, Matt. And he was like, don't ever wake me up like that again. Like because of his war stories and shit that he told me, he's like, I could have killed you. And like, like basically flipped out because of his PTSD. And I don't care that I'm talking shit about this man right now. It's again, holding me accountable. That one of the most traumatic mornings ever. And then he left the house. Remember, he oh, left. we got it. Well, we drove separate. We did drive separate, but he left, we and did. I wanted to say goodbye. He to left, and then Mark was getting surgery, and then he's of yeah. course threatening the like. And then remember what happened when you got home. Oh God. And yeah. I'm not gonna talk. I will let you only be the one that talks about that, but you don't have to, and I don't even want you to because I don't want to feel you pressured to do anything because you don't. But. Crazy shit happened, and, like, I'm, like, all because, what? Because Matt was tired because he had to work eight hours that day doing nothing? Like. So, I think I'll tell this story. This is a bad, I don't know, like, this is a bad story. This is Tell it. This was so traumatizing. This is right at the end. This is the end of everything. This is at the end. Uh, so... I drove home. He's screaming at me on the phone and he's, he's ahead of me because he left the house before me and we had drove separately. So he's way ahead of me. Probably. And this was at like 6am the morning of March. Yeah. 6. It was very early. Cause he had to be to surgery very early. And I wanted to yeah. say goodbye to him and wish him luck, you know, for his surgery before he went in. And, uh, um, he had left before like half hour before and I wanted to stay and say goodbye. So I left a half hour pipe behind him. And uh, it's an hour drive to my house from their house. And so he got quite a bit ahead of me. And uh, we were fighting on the phone on the way home. And uh, I'm like, dude, I just can't talk to you right now anymore. And then uh, finally, I get home and um, he's not there. I'm like, where the hell is Matt at? He's not home. And I noticed right away that the lawn is torn up. Like he, like he had backed the truck up to the front door and had spun his wheels out and torn like there was wheel marks torn into the lawn where he had spat out. At like 6 a.m. Yeah. 
in in the front yard. So he tore when up the she's grass. already talked to me on her way home because I've talked to Matt and he's told me that he's suicidal and now like he's so he tore up the grass. So I'm like okay, and then I go into the house. And I walk into the house, and uh, the first thing I see is there are, like, um, bullets, I guess. Okay, bullets, I guess, is what you call them, yeah. There's yep. bullets all over the counter. Like, there's a box of them, and some of them were spilled, and some of them were missing. And there was just bullets all over the counter in the kitchen. And uh, he had left, and I tried to call him, and his phone started ringing on the opposite side of the counter. So he had left his phone on the counter... And he had left bullets spilled all over the place. And, uh, and I looked and the, the, one of the guns was missing. And, uh, and this is, he's been threatening, you know, to do like harm to himself. And, uh, so I was freaking out. I freaked out. I called Christina. I'm calling Martin before his surgery. And he like, everybody's freaking out. And it was complete chaos, complete chaos. Cause I thought like something really bad was going to happen. And I was just, and he also made me think that as well. Yeah, and I couldn't get a hold of him, couldn't get a hold of him, because his phone is on the counter, so I have right. no way to get a hold of him. And I'm thinking, like, he, I'm thinking he was offing himself somewhere, and I was, right. I was hysterical. That's that what he wanted us to think. Hysterical. And here, Mark is about to get neck surgery. I like, know. within he, 30 minutes. We were all hysterical, thinking, yeah. and, and, and all this while he's trying to get surgery. Like, I was willing to leave my husband's bedside when he's about to get neck surgery. I was like, Misty, I'm about to leave. Like, Matt's, like, he's suicidal. And then Misty comes home to the bullets everywhere. And I'm like, Misty, I'm about to leave this hospital. And she's like, Christina, you cannot leave your husband. And I'm like, I, I'm like no. You, I'm like, you cannot do that to him. You have to stay right. there. And and then, like, an hour later, after I thinking he's dead and whatever, an hour later, he comes walking into the gym. He's like, what? I was at the gym working out. Exactly. 100. Like, Why is this stuff all over? Oh, I was just moving stuff into the garage the night before. And, and no, that's a lie. And I know. he was at my house the night before. So, and Misty, thankfully, like, called me immediately to put my heart at rest, right? Because, like, we're yeah. all just, like, on edge. And here's Mark in surgery. Mark had to go into surgery thinking that Matt was maybe dead. Yeah. Okay. In our polyamorous relationship. So fast forward to a few months later when like we all decide to get divorced. And so father's day weekend, Matt and I are up North and I'll tell my story. So fuck it, Matt, I'm going to tell my story. Okay. Father's day weekend, Matt and I are up North with the kids, right? We get into a fight. Of course it's my fault because I'm a drunk and whatever, just like it was always Misty's fault. Right. Always somebody else's fault besides Matt's. Um, and literally Matt um, got suicidal because, and I totally get it because I am the same and I totally get his mental illness. So he takes the gun and, and this was normal. And I understand that to you guys, this doesn't seem normal, but to us, the way that Misty and I both grew up, like I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. She grew up in dysfunction with Matt. Like, so to us, it's normal. So Matt has the gun and he's over on the side of the garage and him and I are fighting and he's threatening suicide and everything else. And I'm like crying because like, I never just, you saw Misty. I lost all my power with him. Like, yeah. I'm just like, Oh my God. And it's father's day weekend. And I just want it to be nice for him. And at this point I don't have a lot of money because I've literally lost all the money I have um, because nobody wants to support me because I'm with this man. And so like literally everything I've lost. So I can't like give him the father's day that I would have liked to give him. So I already feel like a piece of shit. And then he's like threatening suicide. Literally we're fighting and I'm stone cold sober at this point. He goes to the side of the garage at the cabin with the gun and I hear a shot and Misty, I've told you this story and yeah. I hear a shot and this is one o'clock in the afternoon and I just break. I just cry like I've never cried in my life because I swore to God that he just went over there and shot himself in the head because we were just fighting. He was saying he was going to shoot himself in the head. He was like, that's it. I'm done. And he goes to the side of the garage and I hear a shot and I call for your son and my daughter to come out of the cabin who 
who are 18 and 14 years old, please, I can't find his body. And I'm screaming and I'm crying. And I'm just like, oh my God, I know he fucking killed himself over there. And like, I can't believe this, right? Like I'm flipping the, as you know, cause you've done it many times. And I'm just like, Maddie, and I'm screaming for Maddie and Gabe. And they come running out of the cab. And I'm like, and they heard the gunshot. And I'm like, I can't go find his body. I cannot do it. I just can't. So my daughter, my 18-year-old daughter has to be the strong, badass bitch that she is and go over there. And, and before she could go over there, who do you think comes popping around the corner? Matt. Because he doesn't want my daughter to go through that. And he's like, what? I just shot a squirrel. I know. I was like, you fucking piece of shit asshole. No, you did not shoot a squirrel. I said, where's the fucking squirrel's body? Show me the fucking squirrel's body. Where is the squirrel's body? If you just shot a squirrel, you threatened suicide. You made me think you were fucking dead and our children had to come find you because my 40 year old ass wasn't even strong enough to go find your dead ass laying over there. I shot a squirrel. Where's the squirrel, Matt? Do you think yeah. he ever produced that squirrel? No. Gabe, Madison, and myself were on fucking edge. And then that weekend, so two days later, bring it to Sunday, fa actual Father's Day. That was Friday. So Sunday on actual Father's Day, he then, we get into a fight, and it's all my fault, like it always is. He then leaves a suicide note. And tells me to take the kids home. Well, first he tells me to take the kids home. We get in this huge fight. He leaves a suicide note. Myself, her son, and my daughter had to go search through the woods for an hour for Matt's dead fucking body because he left a suicide note that we literally thought. And I'm like, dude. And Misty went through this for 16 years. This was just Father's Day weekend for me. And I'm like, like, it's so, and his poor son, Gabe, I said to Gabe, I was like, Gabe, he's like, yeah, my dad does this a lot. And I'm like, but he goes, you know what, what fuck Gabe up? He's like, he's never left a note. He came and got me. He was like, Christina. And he like made me come in the house and he was like, he just pointed. He couldn't even speak. He just pointed. And you know what I mean? Like, it was fucked up. Like, and Matt, I'm sorry that we're saying this about you. Like, the fact that I'm even feeling like I have to say sorry, and I know that Misty feels the exact same way as I do. You, the feel, fact guilty. That you feel guilty for just even telling these stories because you know that it's going to make him look bad, and you don't want to make him look bad, but it's what happened. Not okay. Yeah. And despite all his amazing things that he does have about him, and I love, I love him, Misty, and you know that. Like, I know you and do. And so do you. Like, he's so good when he's good. And it's like, why? I don't have love with him anymore. I do have a love and I have love for him as a person, which is different. Right. It is different because I'm still like madly in love with him. And, right. Like, You're in a different stage than me. I mean, I'm further along in my healing process than me. Right. You, you are. are. And yeah, I, mean, I think and I was already in the early stages of healing, even when I met you. I think I oh, was definitely. already in those moments of where I was gaining my power back even before I met you. And I was definitely. on my, and this was just the push I needed to see. Because, like, Mark really um, opened my eyes to see it was a person who treated me well and respected me and treated right. me like a decent human fucking being. And after... Right. And Matt said, you know, we need to take a step back from this shit, like later on in the relationship or whatever. And I'm like, I can't because I didn't want to lose that one person who showed me an ounce of decency and healthy, like love, like 100%. And, you know, later, like, and I've explained this to you, and this is something I haven't talked about here on TikTok, but Matt has told me he knew exactly what he was doing with saying those things to you. Yes. Matt... And I both knew that we were pushing you guys away from us and we were, we were okay with it. And Matt knew that he was doing that and then tried to use it against you. And, and I did the same thing and I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. I don't it. regret anything that happened. No, all. we if don't. Everything happens for a reason. It was nope. fate. It was fate. Mm -hmm. And uh, fate happens for a reason. That's the truth. 
yeah so whatever happens in the end out of all of this it was fate that this was supposed to be part of our it was destiny and like as as much as you think that like i made you strong like you have kept me strong if if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be sitting here in florida i feel like the weakest goddamn person that exists no but misty you're not literally i had to go to florida to get away from this man you live in the same town you know like as him yeah and if it wasn't for you like telling me and coming to my house and being there for me that night despite that my daughter said my daughters both said to me if you choose this man over us it shows us that you don't give a fuck about us they both said that and i still don't know that i would have made the decision to choose them over him if it wasn't for you and Mark. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's sad. And that's just the truth. That's just the I God honest truth. I get it. I get it. And you people, do. people who don't know and haven't lived through it will never understand. They won't. No, because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. And I it's still really have a hard time. It won't make sense because it's no. freaking irrational as hell. Because he's so good when he's good. And that's why I'm like, I'm literally still... Right now, I'm missing him so bad that it hurts. Like, it hurts. Why do I miss him? Why? Lucky, because I was already in a different stage of, like, when we Right, because you had dealt with it for 16 years. I'm in the beginning. Already, I was already past, like, this. I was already in a different stage than you when we all broke up. Like, so I right. didn't have, like, that deep missing or anything. And, you know, and I was just feeling lucky. I was right. feeling- and that's oh. vice versa. Like with me and Mark, like so many people are like, oh, how can you not like, they just can't believe that I don't want Mark back. And Mark was my best friend. And he still will be my best friend all the time. And Mark is an amazing man. He just wasn't mine. And it's okay. You know it what I okay. mean? It is okay. And that's why people are like, how can you just walk away from it's Mark like that? But you okay can't do not that with your life with somebody that just makes you feel like, you know, not 100. You know what I mean? Right. And and despite the fact that Mark was great. And like, if, if it wasn't for Mark, I wouldn't be who I am today because of his yeah. love and acceptance for me. But um, we just weren't each other's people. And that's okay. He's and still okay. my best friend. And to realize this now still gives you a chance to find your person. And, that and I true. will find my person. Because this whole yeah. experience has taught me that my person is out there. And that doesn't oh, like definitely. everybody and lo- everybody that's listening right now. There is a person for everyone. There is so struggling to find a person. Your person is out there. 100. But everybody has a person. There's literally so many people on this earth. Your person there- is waiting to meet you. And I, unfortunately, like I still feel like Matt is my person. And that's, I'm so fucked up for feeling that way. Like, I know. So like dumb. Said, start writing shit down. Start writing so it down. So dumb. Why? Start like writing I just... down every time he hurts you. And then go back and look he... at I know. You know, you have to um you have I to start doing this for me. Yep. And uh because it's hard because you when you're when you're like this and you're like oh i want to be like because i know like through the years through the 16 years there's been points where i wanted to leave matt and i've tried to leave him a couple times during the 16 years okay and every time i just felt like i couldn't do it i felt hopeless i felt like i was unable to survive without him it was um the fear of loneliness was the biggest one the fear of being alone because there's nothing scarier than being completely alone. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, You know, that was my biggest fear of leaving him in like the early days. And plus um, I was not like not financially stable because the first time I tried to I was like probably 28 years old and uh, I didn't have a lot of money. I had a piece of shit car, you know, my credit was poop. So like, and there was no way I was going to be able to be a single mom and support my son and rent a house and, you know, and do all these things. So I was, and I tried to move to my mom and dad's house. I made it about like three days there. And I was like, about ready to like, you know, I'm like trying to move back in with your mom and dad. Not good. Right. <laughs> and, right. Uh, 
and I ended up running back and, you know, and it's just like, and I was so thankful that he would even take me back. You know what I mean? And, um, cause he, that's how he wants us to feel. Yeah. And like, I feel thankful right now. If I got off this live and he called me, I'd answer the phone and I'd probably talk to him for hours and feel like thankful. And that's ridiculous. And thank you for giving me the strength to like, not do that. Yeah, you need to be strong. And uh, remember, like, remember, like, remember the emails from last Thankful that he would even take me back. You know what I mean? And because um, he that's how he wants us to feel. Yeah. And like, I feel thankful right now. If I got off this live and he called me. I'd answer the phone and I'd probably talk to him for hours and feel like thankful. And that's ridiculous. And thank you for giving me the strength to like, not do that. Yeah, you need to be strong. And uh, remember, like, remember, like, remember the emails from last night. Remember, right? right. Just, there are Correct. things recently that happened Thank within you the last for reminding me hours. Of that. Within the last 24 hours, there are things that should give you reason not Keep to Keep reminding me of those emails that he sent me about Madison. Keep reminding yeah. me of that. Because that's what I need. That's what I need to say strong. You need to put your mama bear... Yes. And remember the bad. Remember those emails because those right. were those were messed up. I mean, who does that, he right? Sent me um, a screenshot of those emails, and they were very, very horrible emails. Yeah. So remember those. Right. That's exactly what I'm gonna remember. And thank you. Yeah. Like I love you so much, and I can't wait to see you soon. Yeah. Just gotta remember the bad stuff. Right. And that's, that's what Maddie that keeps telling me. Hurts like so she keeps telling me all of this and she'll try to remind me of it but like sometimes when it's coming from your kid like you don't listen as much as it, it like coming from you and I know that's fucked up right like coming from my kid it should mean so much more which it does but coming from you it just sounds different and I don't know why but thank you yeah you know? and honestly there's nothing nobody is gonna be able to tell you because when I was in your position and like you know when I was going back and forth I like do I want in do I want out do I want in do I want out there people could sob their hearts out to me and have intervention with me and like you know and there was not a damn thing a person could say to me that right. would make that could change my mind because they have just such a hold on you right. like emotionally and mentally that yeah. there's nothing anybody can say it's only the point when you make that decision for yourself Exactly. So there's nothing nobody can say to you. There's nothing nobody can do. It's true. People can speak logical, truthful statements to right. you, tell you the hundred percent truth to your face. You will lose friends. I lost all of yeah. my friends. All your friends, all your family. Everybody gets sick of your shit. You know what they I mean? They do. Because like, they're yeah. like, why do you go so back? You, and I'm just like first of all, they don't want to hear it. Right. Okay? And they'll tell you like what you need to do, and then yep. you don't do it and you lose all of your friends. Yeah. And, you know, your family members even get, like, disappointed in you. Like, why would you continue to do this? And you just get, and it's just a process of isolation. And you become isolated. And they get Yes, trapped. that's where I was going. Yeah. And you get trapped even deeper into this yeah. position that you're stuck in. Yeah. So, and, and then it gets what... harder and harder to leave. Because then you have nobody. Like, where are you going to go? Who do you have left? You have nobody. Right. And yeah. that's what they want. That's yeah. what he wants. Yeah, and then you're like, the fear of just being alone and having nobody will just force you right back because at least I have somebody and I won't be alone. You know what I mean? Right. And and it definitely, for me that was my experience anyway. Yeah, it yeah. definitely was that with me as well. Um, and even though I know I have my daughters right now, and Maddie sleeps with me every night, and like. But, like, the physical, like, intimate touch, for me, I still have that because it's very brand new with me and Matt. Like, for you, you had 16 years, and that shit got old after a while. But you know how good Matt is at, like, literally, like, just making you feel when he touches you. Like, you are just, like, the most important person and woman towards the end there i didn't even want to be with him like that at exactly because you lost i didn't that. want to at all right because it 
seriously made me very uncomfortable to be with him even anymore. Cause that's like, that's when I knew like in my mind that I I'm done because right. I could, I was having trouble even trying to be um, intimate with him towards the end because it was just uncomfortable. I felt like I was, it just wasn't good. It just wasn't good. That's all yeah. I'm going to And I just, I w- couldn't do it anymore. And it, that was a source of our fighting too. And Christina it was and honestly, that's what I was jealous of. Yeah. That's what I was jealous of because I was like, I saw that in you and I was like, Oh my God. Like, and at the time I didn't know what I know now. And I was like, Oh my God, I just, I, I want that. And I could see that Misty was just repelled by when he even touched her. And I was like, when he touches me, it's like the most magical thing in the world, even though I didn't know what I know now. And it was the most unhealthy shit in the world. But I was like, Oh my God, I just want that. And here she is just, and now I know why you were like that. You know what it I mean? Me a goddamn long time. Well, yeah, that. 16 years, you know, Cause, you know, they say it takes a person seven times to leave somebody, you know what I mean? And, uh, you have to, you, it takes a long time because it, you, it's you, nobody can tell you it has to be you. And, and it's I'm, not going to take me seven times. I'm going to say that right now. Yeah. Well, it's already maybe uh, taken me 10, but <laughs> I'm not going to allow it to happen anymore. Yeah. And I, just, I knew I was at the end when I was just very uncomfortable, even being around him even just being physical with him, I knew it was done because I was, it was starting to become traumatic to me to even like, you know, be with him, you know? And I hate saying that because just because we love like, him. Not probably have said that, but it's, it's no, you should have said that. And it's 100% true because Matt makes you, Matt, when Matt is good, Matt is great. Like he's amazing. But when he's not, it's like the lowest that anybody could ever feel. And so it's hard to talk bad about him, right? Like, it's hard. It it's is. It's hard because, you know, you still care because, you know, anybody you've ever loved, you will still have, like, you know, caring feelings for. I don't care. 100%. Oh, and that's man, why I'm done you or anything. If you love somebody at once, I think there's always going to be a little bit of love for them. Always. Over. And that's what I'm feeling about Mark right now. And that's why, like, I've been telling you, because Misty and I talk every day. And I've, like, I'm, like, Misty, I don't want Mark to die. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I love him. I don't love him the way that Misty loves him. I don't love him the way that I loved Matt. But I love Mark because he was my life partner. He's my baby's daddy. I don't want him to die. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's why, like, I understand where Mark is right now. Like, I understand that, like, Mark is literally scared for his life. And so does Misty. Misty understands that, too. Um, And Matt is trying to confuse that. Matt is trying to confuse Misty with um, that's Mark and I trying to get back together because Matt genuinely makes me fearful for Mark's life. And Matt makes Mark feel for for his life and Misty fearful for both of their lives. Um, and that's what's so hard for Misty to decipher right now because Matt is like, oh, look, they're going to get back together. Look how much Christina cares or look how much Mark cares. No, it's because I don't want Mark to die. Like, yeah. And then Matt uses that against you and it's fucked up. But, and I hate Matt for that. I hate, I, I hate that I love him. Yeah. You just need to, like, the best thing for me, like, I don't have that love problem. But the best thing for me was just to cut off all communication. I know. All together. You need to just ignore him. Like, completely. I know. You need to block him on every aspect. I know I've I've blocked Matt on every aspect, and he's still able to communicate with me. He still figures out a way. Yeah. So, um. Somebody just said to me, Christina, put the emails on your mirror. And I should. I should print those emails that that motherfucker sent me about my child. One email. I'll never show anybody those emails. Never. Never would I do that. But like, I should print them. (laughs) Yeah, I should put them on my mirror to remind me what he did to my child. That literally, the what he threatened my child of. No, don't show that email because it involves the kids. Madison told me, like, she put a bullet through her head. 
if he Do did not that. ever show that email because it has the children involved. You can show emails. I never that. would. But like the fact the that ones my daughter that did not like, have the kids when involved. Maddie found I, out, she screamed and it cried out and like literally said, I will put a bullet through my head if Matt does that to me. You shouldn't even be talking about it. Don't even talk about it. So just drop that. Drop that one. Mm -hmm. Don't bring that one up ever again. Mm -hmm. Nope. That is, uh, don't listen to it. It's just, it's just all right here. It's all head games. It is. Right. And it's the same thing I tell you. And I got to remember that for myself. I got to take my own. he's, He's running out of things to get to you with. And now he's coming and saying things about the kids. So right. don't fall yeah. for that shit. And, uh, save the email though. Save it. I will. Yep. yep. But it's don't right. ever tell anybody about it and don't ever show anybody. I'll that never email. show anybody. Yeah. But Cause it involves, want, like, it involves the kids. It involves the kids. They don't need to be in this shit show. They don't. And I want you all to keep me accountable when I, when I do this shit. Like I want you all to be like, remember the email. Yep. Remember the email to say, remember yeah. the email. And this is the email we're talking about. Right. Remember With my that child. Goddamn fucking email. Because it's repulsive. I've read this email and it's repulsive. Mm-hmm. And it's next level psychotic. Mm-hmm. So you keep, you actually print it and put it in your Especially room. knowing like your what purse, my daughter's been through. Exactly you would do that. And fucking pull it out when you're weak and you read that goddamn fucking email. That's goddamn true. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm going to do that. Like, yeah. Just knowing what Maddie's been through, the fact that he would do that, like, is sick it's fucking sick and fuck you matt fuck you matt fuck you you piece of fucking shit trash can low life white trash piece of fucking nothing that's all you are for threatening my daughter like that fuck you it just shows he's losing control it shows he's losing control and now he's coming for something very vulnerable to you right so that means that you're getting more powerful the the bigger the threats and the more you know, to the heart they get, that means you're getting powerful. That means you're getting stronger than him. Mm -hmm. So just know that the worse it gets, that means you're gaining your power back. Yeah. And that's why I try to remind myself, like when it gets real bad, that means that the worse it gets, that means you're gaining your power back. Yeah. And that's why I try to remind myself, like when it gets real bad, that means he's, that means he's (laughs) trying harder and harder to get to me because he's not getting to me. Exactly that I'm getting stronger 100 percent, and you're so strong right now and I'm like literally like I am thriving off of your strength right now and I hope you know that I I am not strong girl I am no you are don't you take those words back you are making me strong right now through your strength and you have no idea how bad I needed this and I'm gonna tell you one thing Misty that's good about today Mm -hmm. um is that the police did come here and my address I saw it for a minute I was logged in for a minute while I was sitting at my computer. So I get to sleep soundly tonight. You want to know why? The police are watching this house and going to make sure that nothing bad happens to me and my children tonight. Yeah. I don't have to worry tonight while I sleep. That's right. And you know don't what? ever worry. Don't ever worry. Because I think it's all, everything is talk. Like all this doxing. Like nobody's ever, like there's... All these people might say a lot of stuff, but people are good people in general. They might say shit and talk a lot of shit, yep. but they're not going to actually act on it and show up at your house. That's a different level of crazy. And there's right. not a very high percentage of people in the world that have that level of crazy. <laughs> is, you know what I mean? I'm not worried about... The thing is, is that I'm not worried about that and that I am that high level of crazy that like there will be a dead body on the floor if somebody did do that, whether it's me or somebody else. I'm not scared about that. It was just the, the, the trauma I would put my kids through if something like that happened. So it's just, I'm going to sleep soundly knowing that, like, I don't have to worry about my kids seeing me shoot any, uh, like, anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm going to get off of here, girl. I love you. Yeah. And I, think, I want you to stay on because there are a lot of people that want you to stay on. And you're a third oh shifter. God. You guys want me to stay on by myself? Yes. 
you're going to stay on by yourself because you're strong. And I'm going to listen to you while I go put myself in bed and wash my face. for like five minutes because I'm going to freak out. Like, I can't do this shit by myself. I can't. Like, I don't know why. Oh, yes, the fuck you can. Guys, go hype her up. Guys, leave my live and go over to Missy's live and hype her up and tell her she can. Already, like, scratching at my head. (laughs) No, you got this, girl. You got I'll try this. For, I'll try for a few minutes. And if it doesn't go good, then, you know. All right, girl. I'm going to watch. I'll try for you. a few. I was just telling Mark the other day, I need to start getting on here, like, maybe 10 you or 15 do. minutes. You do. just go, like, 15 minutes and just look yes. like a crazy lunatic because I don't know how to talk to people. But like, Look, you know. I look like a crazy lunatic right. right now. I've been crying. My whole face is, like, red. I look crazy, yeah. and I don't care. And I love you. And you have this. You have this. I am just not a very social person. You're you di- are you are a different you are. animal than me. You are though. Me and you are totally different animals. Like <laughs> you just gave me the strength tonight. You gave me the strength to even be here in Florida. Yeah, period. you're like a strong lion, and I'm like the gopher popping. You're up. the strong lion tonight, and I'm like the gopher. I would have taken Matt back tonight had he just answered a phone call of mine, which he wouldn't even do. So yeah, who's yeah. the strong one? That see. I don't have a problem with you watching the video. The problem is you haven't subscribed yet. It's free. Hit the subscribe button.